now for our rants and raves, starting with Roy. Okay, well, um, I usually do nothing but but praise the Pulitzer Prizes because that's sort of my beat in the world, you know, having written about it quite a bit. But um, I decided to have a rant on the Pulitzer Prizes this year because there's a right now anyway, because there's a glitch in the system that they think needs to be addressed. And that is that it is so closely tied to the calendar year that when they give a prize, a story that kind of moves over from one year to another seems to get lost. And one that we were discussing tonight, the the, um, the Julie Brown story, I think is one of those cases. Didn't get nominated. Didn't get, it was not, it was nominated by the paper. I've done a little bit of research mm-hmm. on this. Um, but it was not a finalist. That's one of the keys. It's, if mm-hmm. it's a finalist, one of the three in each category, it's listed. And so it was kind of washed out from that standpoint. And I think one of the reasons is that the impact of the story didn't really start to happen until a little mm-hmm. bit earlier this year. Well, obviously, just the last couple of weeks was the big impact. But there have been a number of stories that the Pulitzers have had over the years that you would just think would, would win Pulitzers that, uh, that haven't. And one was the USA Gymnastics case with Larry oh, Nasser. Yeah. The Indianapolis Star had done mm-hmm. tremendous work, but it lapsed over a couple of years. And it was, mm-hmm. they won a couple of awards from people that aren't as concerned with impact, but the impact came later. Yeah. Um, another one that comes to mind from the Wall Street Journal is the Theranos case. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, again, reached Good over one. a couple of different years, was not nominated. Right. Joanna. So I have a rant against Robert Foster. He is a Mississippi <laughs> state representative running for governor. And when a reporter from Mississippi Today named Larissa Campbell asked to ride along with him uh, on a campaign ride, he said no on the ground that she is female. Here's how he explained himself to her and on CNN. I didn't want to end up in a situation where me and Miss Campbell were in a were alone for an extended period of time. So out of precaution, uh, I wanted to have uh, her bring someone with her, a male colleague. And it's, it's the other thing that I think is important to point out is that this is my truck, and in my truck we go by my rules. So, yeah, his rules are he wanted a male chaperone that she provided to go yeah. along on the grounds that, A, he had this sort of Mike Pence-esque deal with his wife and God where he wouldn't be alone with another woman. He was worried about opposition research for another campaign spotting him with another woman and making hay and telling the world something false. And he was worried about a Me Too accusation. Well, sir, treat the reporter as a human being and a professional doing her job keep your hands to yourself, and there will be no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he assumed that people were going to assume something promiscuous was going on. That was his word. It's like, really? Not it's bananas. bananas. <laughs> okay, Dan Kennedy. I have a rant for the uh, demise of the print edition of the Chicago Defender, uh, one of the great African-American newspapers in the country, founded in 1905. Uh, one of the wonderful anecdotes that I learned about this when the news was announced this week is that in the 1920s, they would have Pullman porters bring copies of the paper hmm. down to the South, and the Defender was one of the reasons that so many African-Americans began moving to Chicago and other uh, northern cities later on. Uh, they're going to continue continue online. No one is losing their jobs. On the other hand, it's not clear how they're going to make their money. So I, I wish them well, but uh, this is a big and not so good step. Uh, John. Well, the Boston Globe, as you all know, has written many, many times over the years about um, racial disparities in criminal sentencing, prison overcrowding, Uh, racism in the criminal justice system. And last week they wrote an article about an effort to deal with those issues that has been going on for some years under former DA Dan Conley and now perhaps more aggressively under the new Suffolk County DA Rachel Rollins. And uh, where she's saying we're just not going to prosecute certain nonviolent crimes. Well the article by two veteran criminal justice reporters, uh, Shelley Murphy and Andrea Estes, Uh, gave voice to some of the critics of what's been going on, documented some cases where a not-so-nonviolent criminal benefited from this new policy, and also interviewed D.A. Rollins, and you heard from supporters of her system. Well, this was just too much for the sensibilities of 19 local legal scholars who wrote a a public letter, I don't even know if it's been printed in the Globe yet, but they released it publicly today, uh, claiming the article was misleading 
and irresponsible, um, smearing the globe's motives, claiming that they're carrying water for a specific outcome they want. The whole thing was very Trumpian in an effort to cast something as fake news. Shame on the people who were involved in that. And we should say that Michael Medved, who's our morning, uh, Dan, Daniel Medved is one of the, he, he does, uh, uh, legal commentary, he was one of the people who signed it. Some right? great H. people on that list, but you know, there's Larry Tribe, a big Trump basher, acting like Trump. Not a good look, Larry. All right, so my final piece tonight is not really a rant or a rave. It's kind of a denouement of a story that we have covered many, many times here on Beat the Press, and that is that Jerry Callahan of WEEI was fired today. This comes on the heels, of course, of uh, Kurt Minahan being let go last uh, fall after he refused to go along with some new constraints that they had put on him. And uh, here's what Jerry tweeted out today. He said, well, that was fun. After 20 years in Morning Drive, I did my last show on EEI this morning. Thanks to all who listened. Unfortunately, this ain't a movie. Sometimes the bad guys win. Much more to come. So, yes, the show was in a rating slide. They had gone back to the old format of just doing sports. But there's more to this story, as Jerry says. There was uh, a businessman out in Sudbury, I believe, who's been very aggressively approaching WEI, uh, documenting things that have been said, and he continued to do it. He documented a lot of things that uh, Kurt Manahan said and has continued to do that since Man Manahan left. And asking the EEI or telling management that they shouldn't be tolerating these kind of things, and then he, he goes to the advertisers that do want to be a part of this kind of thing. So really, management, I feel like, buckled to this rather than if, if they had a problem with what Jerry Callahan was saying all these years, they should have done it on that basis alone, but it was more than that. And everybody was well within the rights. I'm not criticizing anybody for the positions they took, but I think there will be a, a little bit of a follow-up on this. Kirk Minahan has already tweeted that he wants Jerry Callahan to come oh. on his podcast to talk about it. So when Callahan says more to come, that may well, be what he's referring to. I think there'll be a little to. bit more than that.